Oh man, so it's official. After two or three years of accommodative monetary policy, we've got our first interest rate hike, 0.25%. Yes, 25 basis point hike official. As expected, as we've been predicting for a long period of time, we're going to digest exactly what happened, what was said in the Jerome Powell conference, how does this affect, affect crypto? We're going to look at the Bitcoin price, we're going to look at the macroeconomic impact as well. So make sure you hit up the like button, make sure you're subscribed to the full live stream. If you want, haven't had the chance to go watch that, this summary should fill you in on everything important that happened with the Jerome Powell conference and the FOMC update. This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Check out the links below in the description, 70% off to make sure you're staying safe in crypto. Please get yourself set up on a VPN, guys. I genuinely use NordVPN. I've been using them well before they helped on this channel. It's an absolute no-brainer. It's a couple of bucks a month. Absolute no-brainer. It's a minimum amount you need to do in terms of security. Right. So 25 basis point interest rate hike. What does this mean? What does this mean for crypto? Well, first of all, we were expecting this, right? We knew that if we got a 0.25% interest rate hike, the markets would not be too bothered by it, right? It was expected what could have rug pulled the market was a double rate hike, a double rate hike. And yes, one member voted for a double rate hike. We know who that was. Bullard, cough, cough. I'll show you that on the dot plot. But, um, you know, it, this is this is as expected, right? This is what we're expecting, 0.25, and the market is not too bothered. But what I do want to show you is let's play through what happened over the day. Because you can see here, the blue line you can see is the start of the day today. We had a bit of trade direction running us to the upside and then pumping it back down. Traders taking advantage of eager longs, right? People are desperate to buy today because they're like, oh, is the Fed going to give us a reason to run? And then dump them back down. Then we had this run up. Okay, again, trade direction. And as soon as the announcement was made, sell the news. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Typical. None of that mattered though, right? So we saw that start to happen in the lead up. That brings us to this red line. Now at the red line, why did we fall? We got the 0.25% increase, which was expected. But what wasn't expected was in the summary of economic projections. And I made this clear to you guys in yesterday's video. You have to look into the statement. And in the statement, Jerome Powell and the team vote on various economic factors, including GDP. And their vote for GDP for 2022 came in at 2.8%. Yes, that's versus a 3.5 estimate from Bloomberg, which shows that they're seeing less. And they're, they're blaming this on the war, and they're saying oil prices, etc., causing GDP to come in at 2.8. But Jerome Powell later said that that's not too bad, and it's actually a good rate of growth, which is interesting. So the market didn't like that, and initially, straight away as the news came out and they read that headline, it it started to fall to the downside. That's fears of stagflation, right? Because we know there's a healthy labor market, there's inflation, but the economy is slowing. Um, that's stagflation. So people got fearful of stagflation and we fell to the downside. But then the savior himself, Jerome Powell, came and spoke and he did a good job. It was a bullish um, statement in the first place, but his Q&A, more importantly, was very good. It was some very good uh, use of words. He was vague at, vague at times, coy at times, but he didn't, importantly, say anything hawkish to suggest he's going to be aggressive, the economy's super healthy, and we're going to increase rates very extremely, and he's kept it nice and telegraphed. Remember, Markets don't like uncertainty. They're happy when they know where things are going and they can plan accordingly. And he made it very clear that you can see in the dot plot um, that what we're expecting is the majority of people expecting 1.9% in, uh, Fed funds rate by the end of 22. Now, basically, in essence, you, like how we've been saying, we expect at least six to seven 0.25% increases throughout this year. So there's six more FOMC meetings. We expect 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, which will put you in that range uh, by the end of it. There might need to be a single double rate hike. And I think the market's going to start to price that in. Powell's been pretty clear on that. We're going to get to that 1.9% rate hike by the end of the year, and the market shouldn't be too concerned. He also mentioned that the economy doesn't want or need accommodative stance. The economy is good. He said the labor markets are tight. Employers are struggling to hire. He said the labor demand is strong. He even mentioned that there are 1.7 openings to every unemployed person. So wages are rising fastest in years. And he expects the labor market to continue to remain strong. Okay, so he, reiter he reiterates, as always, his goal that he wants to you know drive price stability in terms of inflation and make sure there's a sustainable strong labor market his inflation goal continues to be keeping inflation at two percent he says there's strong aggregate demand in the economy but he also addressed the fact that there are supply bottlenecks restricting supply so this is demand-led plus 
um, supply shock led as well. But as people, you know, we're seeing it with the Ukraine Russia issues, we're also seeing it with China and the emergence of more COVID instances. Will that cause more pressure on supply chains and create more bottlenecks? These are all things to play out. He mentioned that you Russia and Ukraine will put additional pressures on the US inflation back at home, which we kind of knew. And he also said um, that he's going, and this was an important bit, which a lot of people are overlooking. He did mention quite strongly, his tonality was quite strong, that they do have a plan for balance sheet shrinkage. This is something that people have been overlooking. Now, think about it. We've been printing a lot of money for two, year, two years. Money in the system, Jerome Powell with the money printer, visualise that. Now he's got to suck that money back out. He's got to reduce his balance sheet. All the assets he's been purchasing, whatever the figure is, is it 1.2 trillion or something like that, probably about 90 billion he needs to sell monthly for the next 15, 16 months. And he's saying that the team have come up with a plan and he may even announce that as soon as the next meeting. So this is definitely something else that could start to worry markets and we'll need to monitor that as well. So think of that as a hoover that's sucking up all the money that he just printed. He's got to start taking it back out of the economy. He's saying there's too much money in the economy, too much inflation, let me get it all back out. And this is like a, you know, think about it, you're trying to slow a car down, but now you've got someone pushing that car as well to slow it down from the front as well, like a Hulk kind of guy, right? Yeah, so this is a real, you know, strong break strong breaks to slow the economy down now um regarding the speed of the rate hikes there was various questions trying to ascertain you know how quickly are we going to see the rate hikes again he didn't make it very clear but he did say that there would be seven rate hikes which is kind of what we expected right we're saying we're going to see uh there's one already now you've got six more fomc meetings i think at least 0.25 in every meeting unless something major happens and he did say this is a live environment and he'll take each meeting as it comes and he'll look at the data so he's being very coy with that it's the typical answer he tends to give so what does this mean how did the market react well we saw as he spoke that bitcoin then started to run and we got the run above forty thousand. we can you can see now we're higher than the points of when the announcement was made the announcement was made right here at about forty thousand, hovering around forty thousand. we've now touched almost forty one thousand. we're trying to make some progress here on the five minute chart if we head on over to the hourly on bitcoin remember crypto is following the wider markets right now so there's no point me pulling up an altcoin right now and there's no point looking too deeply into bitcoin because bitcoin is being treated as a risk asset you guys know we cover that a lot here on this channel it's looking at the smp and more importantly probably the nasdaq right now as a risk on high growth play okay so for people looking for high returns we're still here precariously at the bottom of this wedge Let's bring out our brush. You can see here, we're hanging precariously here. We don't want to be here for too long, okay? The longer you're here, the more likely you are to break to the downside, but we want to see ourselves start to work our way back up and get to 44 and a half here on Bitcoin as that's where we've got rejected one, two, three times. Let's go break this level retest and head higher. That's what we want to see over the next coming weeks. And we want to see how do markets respond. It's not going to happen now. You have a whole bunch of trade activity now. But over the next few days and weeks, we're going to see which direction does the market choose to be in now that we have a bit more clarity around the Fed's decision. It's happened now. The Red Bull's gone. The printing is gone. Now we're coming back to reality, back to sober, back to saying, hang on, it's not too bad. Interest rates went up by 0.25. It's OK. Economy is still strong. We're, we're good. Uh, businesses, Jerome Powell even mentioned this as well. He said household and business balance sheets are super strong right now. This is a very strong economy. Uh, aggregate demand continues to be high. So people start to say, OK, we're OK. Earnings are still good. Companies are still doing well. We're OK. The thing we don't know, the elephant in the room, is what happens with the conflict, right? And he continued to mention that as well. And he said the conflict could, you know, create some spillover. So we need to continue to monitor that. Anything can happen. Putin could do anything. NATO could do anything. This could spiral. Hopefully not we pray it doesn't but we have to be cognizant of that as well let's see if we can take a quick look at the spy let's see if i can pull up the spy which will be on my green list there we go and as you can see the spy played out in a similar fashion okay so we got the news and we're now moving higher than we were before the news if i just head over to the five minute chart you can see the exact same pattern happening okay as the announcement was made where the red line is it fell fears of stagflation and we started to fall. And then as Jerome Powell started speaking, reassuring the markets, we worked our way back up. And we're now quite a bit higher, probably about 07 to 0.8% higher than the point we were when the announcement was made. So good movement here on the S&P. And that is going to allow crypto to get moving. That's going to be the key right now. Remember, we're going to look towards the stock market. We're going to look towards the wider economy to see how things play out. OK, let's also take a look at the major indices as we did. We see the S&P is up 2%. Nasdaq is up 3.4% on the day a huge rally and this is why you cannot time the market you've got to be very very careful with your stocks with your crypto about being in your high conviction plays 
and dollar cost averaging into them. I wouldn't panic right now. I wouldn't say, oh, you've missed the boat to jump into the market right now. You've got to be patient. You've got to be methodical. You've got to be rational and not emotional, okay? So we need to be very, very careful. There could easily be 10, 15% more downside before we get our long-term rally. But now it's a case of sitting back and looking at how the market digests this, okay? Overall, it wasn't a super hawkish meeting. He came out 0.25%. He's expecting six more 0.25%. And the economy should take that in its stride. He has not rug pulled. He hasn't surprised the market. And everything should be in hand. So there you have it, guys. There is an update on exactly what was said by Jerome Powell in the FOMC meeting, which was long anticipated. Hope you guys have a good summary and an understanding of what that happens and how that impacts crypto. If you have any questions, jump into the Discord. I'll leave the link in the pinned comment below. Head over into there. Meet like-minded people. Tag me with any questions you have as well. Don't forget to check out NordVPN, who've been kind enough to bring us this video. Links in the description. And I'll see you in the next one.